<laughs> Hello. Okay, so welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I've been up and running. Um, but today we're going to be doing our mal dress. So this is a very popular costume that I make on my Etsy shop and here at the studio. Very, very popular. Lots of girls love it. And I'm going to show you how I put it together. So first, let me get my prep bag together. So a couple of things I have going on. Um, I've got a couple of girls in here with me doing virtual classes, so if you hear anybody, that's what it is. Um, I got a couple of my little things. I got my zipper and my order form. Of course, it tells me how, what size I needed to cut ahead of time, so I went ahead and cut everything ahead of time in the bag. Let's get it put together. Okay, let me get a couple of these things out of the way first. All right, so first thing is we have a couple of pieces here. We have our little prep form lace, a front lace, um, our prep form front, front and backs, more prep forms, and our straps. Okay, so let's do our straps first. So for the straps, all I do is literally just fold it in half and sew it. I'll give you guys a couple of tricks on that. I like to turn them out with a safety pin, personally. Turn this out. We just moved into our new location, so I had to set everything back up. It was a big move. <laughs> to say the least. It's a big move. I didn't notice that we actually have a lot of chicks coming in here next to us. Well, I'm by the road now, so that's good, because I get signage. At some point, you may hear my son screaming, your mom! He has this habit. After last seeing me for about 10 minutes, he comes looking for me. Okay, so all I do is just turn it out with my safety pin. Okay. Right, I'm set those aside until I need them. All right, so with my front and back pieces, I cut out two layers, so two for the front and two for the back. I fully line my mal dresses. Um, so even if it's a costume, I still try to make sure it's really good quality when I have people buying from me. I'm just going to mark my Make a couple notches to mark my dart because it has a front dart. And then I'm going to mark where the straps are going to go. And I do this by eye because I've done it for so many dresses that I just pretty much know what I'm doing. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and make my plates. There's two sides, there's two plates in the front of the dress. And I think I hear my son coming. <laughs> yep, just like I said. I'm on live right now, baby. <laughs> he peeks his head in, he looks at me, and then he goes. <laughs> Watching either Pokemon or Power Rangers. One of the two. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. So I've done my darts on both of my front pieces. Now I'm going to assemble the front and the back pieces. So I take two of the back pieces, set them aside, two of my front pieces together. The good thing about this fabric, because it's a solid, there really isn't a right or wrong side of the fabric. It's just, um, it's a solid. And it's a knit fabric. So um, it stretches. It gives a little bit of stretch for the dress. You don't have to worry too much about it being perfect in size. Because it is a fitted top. If you look at the picture, it's actually fitted. Those little notches help me find where the side seam is versus the um, top of the just where the sleeves come in the back. Okay, not sleeve straps. Okay, let me try to get this one more side done, and then we're just gonna start. Then the magic starts happening. Okay, so we have one full front piece and a second full front piece right there. I like to do a top stitch at the side seam because like I said, this is a stretchy fabric and I want to make sure that um, when the girl is wearing it, she can wear it if it's a little snug, it doesn't pop any stitches. Because it is a knit fabric and I'm not using a serger and I'm not using um, a zigzag stitch. So it'll still give it room to go, to maneuver without popping any stitches. So I did that in the front and the back piece. And I have them going different directions. So for the front piece, I have it going towards the back. For the lining piece, I have it coming towards the center. It helps, it helps everything kind of lie flat so I don't have to press anything, which is good. So this is the lining piece. I got to put them towards the center. The ones that I did towards the back is going to be my front piece. Now this is where magic starts happening. Okay. So you're going to grab your front lace piece. I like to use the lace that has the scalloped edge to it. Um, I already cut the center front right there. I have my center front right here on my piece. Make your little notch so I can see that later. It comes in handy later on in the whole process. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. Line up my center front with that piece right there. It's looking good. One side's a little higher. I'm gonna dip that down a little bit. Okay, perfect. I'm just gonna sew it down just to hold it in place right now. I'll do the other side. I'm just holding it in place. I kind of like to stretch it a little bit. So that when I do, when that dress is on the girl and it's stretching, it's lays flat. All right, now here's where the magic comes in. Now, on the dress, there are these two green lines um, that kind of like accent where the lace meets in. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just cutting a piece that's a little extra, just a little longer to kind of extend its weight um, on either side. Okay. Take it, put it down. I like to kind of have it come off to the side of the side seam right there. I am covering my stitch line that I did originally when I put down the lace. Ready, ready. 
again. And you want to kind of measure it out so that it's I like to make sure it's somewhat even. I'm like looking to make sure it's symmetrical. Okay, one more. Perfect. Look at that. It is really coming together. Get a break. Okay, so that's there. That, that's done there. Now I'm going to um, add my straps on. I'm going to put them right on either side of this top piece. You got to kind of water my fingers a little bit. I like to roll the straps a little bit and have them roll. Get a notification on Facebook. Um, and then put it down like that. You, I could, you know, you could, or you don't have to do a top stitch on here, but I kind of like to, like I said, it has dual purpose, kind of keeps everything steady, and then it also um, helps me from having to iron it because it helps kind of make flat, and it kind of gives it a curve shape as well. That curve shelf helps because it comes from here and goes to the back. Um, somewhere is my cell phone. Dear, can you grab it for me? The alarm is ringing. <laughs> again? Again. Well, you have to understand I have alarms for like everything when your brother was in school. Yeah. So my son, who's seven, is in second grade and he is doing virtual school as well, but to, this week he's tracked out. So they have different track um, outdates. So like they go to school for six weeks. They're out for two weeks. Um, so uh, I'm going to make it so that the curves come in. Hold on just a second. Dwight Jr., you need to put headphones on if you're going to be in here, baby, with your, because I'm live. Well, I'm sorry, honey. They can't hear you and me, baby. Okay. I'm pretty much making sure they're the same distance away from the sides. And then I'm gonna pack them down, just a quick little top, like a basting stitch almost. There we go. So any extras. There we go. So now I'm going to take these straps and I'm going to curve them this direction and also just kind of tack it down. Tack it down. I want to make sure I'm not twisting it. I'm keeping it nice and flat when I come and tack it down on the other side. And it, I'm just doing it right between the two little notches that I had made. And I just threw all those layers at once so that it was symmetrical. Now you can trim off anything you want to. This is all not going to be seen, but I mean, if you want to. So there we go. This one here is kind of coming off a little bit, so I want to re tack it down. Make it quite wrap the bottom layer. There you go. That's better. Okay, so that's, that's the front. And now we're going to add the peplum. So the first layer I do is I go ahead and make my center notch on my peplum lace piece, just to keep everything symmetrical. And I'll just make a little snip, like a triangle piece, right there in the center. I'm gonna put that up towards this direction. And this is when I start pinning, because at this point, things kind of wobble a little bit. So, I want to make sure everything kind of stays put. So the peplum piece ends at the side seams. It doesn't go all the way around. It just goes towards, just in the, um, the side seam. So each side seam. And then 
That's my other front piece. I'm going to put that to the side right now. Have one piece. I think I got two pieces. I got I cut two of them. That was great. <laughs> right, and now I'm gonna put this piece on. Marking up my centers really, really, really helps. And then I mark my side seams as well. That kind of helps as well to kind of keep everything pinned in place. Like I don't go crazy, crazy pinning, but I do pin my side notches and my center notch. Everything else kind of takes care of itself. There we go. And then this piece here. This is that extra length layer that happens. It's a lot of layers. It really is. Um, for the deluxe version, like I make like a really like deluxe deluxe version, it has about six top layers of just the this layer here, and then about eight under layer. <laughs> so it's a very full, fluffy dress um, that really shows off. The beautiful dress from the Mel transformation. So if you're not familiar with the movie, um, this is the dress that um, happens after the coordination, I think it was, um, or some type of prom or coordination. I don't remember what it was, but they're on the boat and Mal turns into a dragon to go fight Uma, who's in the water. And um, when she comes back from being in the dragon form, she transforms back to a girl and she comes wear out wearing this um, she wears, oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I catch all my layers. She um, goes from wearing the yellow and blue dress to wearing this purple dress. And it's like charred and kind of flamed because the dragon obviously was spitting out fire and everything else. So just gonna make sure all my layers are together. I stop and just readjust everything to make sure all my layers are together. Do they have to be absolutely perfect? You know, you just want to catch them. That's the big thing. You want to make sure you catch all of your layers. I'm just kind of pinning it as I, pinching it with my fingers as I go. Somebody else said something to me. Yay! I don't have the live chat on right now because um, this is also content for kids. So I didn't want to have the live chat on. And I think it's going to be scheduled for later today. So this is like really early this morning. And then we're going to go from there. So look at that. Already almost completely done. Really awesome. Kind of neat, huh? Um, and then from here is where we do the extra layers underneath it and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to show you how I put in the zipper. Once I show you how to put in the zipper, then we can um, work on this piece and the tool that goes underneath it, like the connector. I don't have my connector piece, though. For some reason, that's probably what I did. I probably cut two of the pep ones. Um, I didn't cut my connector piece, so I need to grab my connector piece in a minute. So I'll put this here. Oh. So another thing that, um, as you, you could probably see this in the photo, but the, um, we also have the stripe here, like the belt almost, like that leather belt she was wearing. That's also in the dress. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking it and I'm putting all of my seam allowance going down towards the bottom of the skirt and doing just a top stitch. You're not going to be able to see this when I put the belt on, but it just kind of keeps everything going in one direction and keeps it from being a little bulky and keeps all my layers out of my way so when I do start layering on the under skirt part it really comes together okay. well 
it really gives it that nice, beautiful flow and fullness effect is the upper layer, but it's also this um, peplum in the circle skirt cut out with all the jagged edges. Um, when you do get a dress from me, it does have all these jagged edges. Um, it's not finished edge. You burn off the edges. I didn't bring my lighters off. I'm going to get back to But um, I burn all of my edges. So it looked burnt just like the costume. I mean, just like the movie. All right, so this here, I, I make this ahead of time. Um, this is a purple ghost grain ribbon. I think it's about two inches. And then I use a really thin quarter inch in the middle to just give it that effect. Bless you. <laughs> I, got, I got it. I got a studio full of babies up in here. <laughs> I got my kiddos in here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to line this up with, it's not an invitation to white Jane. Fun. Um, so I like to just kind of line it up with that waist seam, that connecting seam, the green with the waist seam. I kind of feel my way through it. And then I put it down really, really close to that. And I like to kind of keep everything straight. And I pin it and I hold on to it. And I can kind of feel it with my fingers. Um, and then I go. I haven't made as many of these dresses this year as I normally do. Um, this time last year, I already had about 50 of these dresses out the door. This year, about 12. Nobody really knows whether they're doing Halloween. It's up in the air. It's kind of... Um, you know, people are what's going on. Please don't do that. Thank you. He's shaking my camera. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to give you a few more minutes, baby. Please be patient, okay? Thank you. Um, so that's the whole thing. We don't really know what's we're doing Halloween, not doing Halloween. I think it's pretty much being in the consensus that most people are going to try to do Halloween. Especially here in North Carolina, we're, we're just starting to open up a little bit more. So we're opening up more and more and more. All right. So there is the dress with the purple line, the purple and green line into it. The under layers is what really makes it come. This is a short version. So the short version means it doesn't go all the way to the floor. This kind of goes more like past the knee length. Um, so this is the short version of the dress. It's still pretty full and long. It just doesn't go dragging on the floor like the one from the movie. A lot of people like this version because it's a little bit, um, it's just better for the kid to kind of walk around when they're trick-or-treating on Halloween. Um, they, I've had girls wear this for Christmas. They get it for Christmas so they can wear it for their birthdays and things like that. So it's not just um, a dress that you only wear for Halloween. This is a very well-constructed dress. It's very good materials and fabric that will last throughout the year for a lot of different things. Okay, so now I'm going to do the zipper, but I have to take my foot out and put in my zipper foot. My tools to get my zipper foot. It's a little bit more work than the regular machine, but it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my zipper. So for what I do with my zipper is I put pretty side of the zipper to the pretty side of So I'm going to put it pretty side down with the teeth, which is also what I call pretty side down on top of it. And come on down. I line it up. Um, I mark where my green line is coming in on my zipper right there. I mark it so that way I know 
on the other side when I go to put it on, I need to line that up with the green part on the other side. And it doesn't always work perfectly, but it gets very close, like very close to being um, lined up perfectly. This is just not going to go through. Okay, that's okay. I use a clippy. Okay. It's just to help let it stay there for just a second. I it's stitch length. So it's more of a basting stitch. Um, I do this in case it doesn't quite line up. I can take off one side or both sides a little easier without having to um, take out tiny little stitches. And I take out tiny little stitches. So there's that side. I'm going to take this side and I'm going to put also this side onto the pretty side. Remember, I'm going to match up that green line with that red line that I have. And it's just a piece of crayon. It's just a piece of crayon. It comes right off. You could use all fancy tools and things like that, but hey, if the crayon works, use it. <laughs> and now it's just on the zipper. So it's not like everywhere. Okay. I'm also trying to make sure that this here lines up with the other, with the top portion of the back of the dress. There it is. And now let's see if it's matched up. Cross your fingers. Cross your finger, kid. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Make sure it all lines up before I finish it off. Well, my dad didn't cross my fingers. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Oh, I told you that strap was going to play. Okay, let's see. That's just a strap. This doesn't have to go on today. I think I got it too close to the edge. First of all, I think I needed to get it a little closer. All right, let's see. This job just like fell off. Look at that. Turned out really well. It matches up really, really good. I love it when my green line just matches up like that. Okay, so that's there. So now I'm going to go ahead and change my stitch length to a smaller stitch length. So um, I can really get close in there and finish this up. Then I'll show you how we put this together here. So it's very, um, it's very close when I use a zipper foot. So I like to come in. Hold this little down. I'm coming in from the other side. So I can really make sure I'm catching all of my layers. My zipper head is in my way, so I'm going to pull it out the way for just a second. Actually, let me do it. Let me do it this way first. I'm going to pull my zipper head out the way for a second. All right. I'm getting really, really close to those zipper teeth without going over them. This helps so that you see less of the zipper. I am not using an invisible stitcher, stitch stitcher. I'm not using an invisible zipper here. I'm using a regular all-purpose zipper that you would um, find at Joanne's just regular construction. Getting really close. Really close to those teeth. Again, without going through them. I lift up my foot in and I close my zipper to kind of get it out the way for this part. And I come to the bottom. So you just, just barely see the teeth. You don't see the um, the tape, you don't see the zipper tape, you just see the teeth. Okay. 
going to turn it out. Now, this is a secret that I've learned. Um, my dad taught me how to put in zippers like this. He taught me two ways, actually. But this is this is the way that I like to do it um, because it's quick and it's fast. He used to, he did teach me how to like do the seam first like, with a basting stitch and then put the zipper on the other side and pin it really all through and then sew it and sew it. But then you see the stitch line on the other side. So this is the other way he taught me. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and line all of my pieces up. And the instruction. It's almost like backwards. Hold on. I think I got it. It's almost like I'm sewing it backwards because I'm having to. Um, come from a different direction. Because I don't want to change my foot out. <laughs> I need to keep the zipper foot on. That's why I have the zipper foot on. But I don't want to have to change it. So. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that all my zipper tape and everything is away from it. And I'm getting really, really close, right close to it so that I can get right up against it. So that way when I open it, when I open it, see how it just is seamless. It comes right in there really pretty. I think I can see that. I think so. All right, now I'm going to stretch my, my foot out, and then we're going to finish off do the last couple of layers. I do need a connector piece, though. So are you in class yet? Not technically. Can you get me um, a piece of uh, fabric like this from the Malvin? Are you in class? Let's see if All right, so now we got all that together. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew together the two pieces in the back. I'm going to start where that seam where I had blocked off before and then just go ahead and sew all the way down. I've got very animated children. All the way down until I get to this part right here. Okay. So the outside of the dress is done, completely done. Just like that. So pretty. Super, super, super pretty. Is that pretty? Let me go get my, um, be right back. I gotta go get my connector piece. <laughs> Baby, I'm still recording, honey. I'm not doing that. <laughs> my son is very anxious to see, to get my attention. All right, so I'm getting a connector piece. It's a lot like the peplum. Um, the only difference is it's a little shorter. 
Um, and actually, this just connects all of the. It connects all of the pieces together when I'm making my. I'm going to curve this because I don't want all these jagged edges. I'm just going to curve it to kind of follow. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is all this is doing is connecting the tool, the multi multi layers of tool, like the eight layers of tool. This one's only a four layer one, but it'll connect all of the layers of tool further down. So up at the waist, it connects down at the hip line. So it just makes it more efficient. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> okay, so now I'm taking my lining piece. Hey, yeah. Um, and adding my connector. So just like we did before, pretty sides touching. I'm gonna put my connector right on center, mark there. There, perfect. Go ahead and add my connector. Who's messaging? <laughs> Somebody did something. I want to know if you're in class, why are you reading a book? <laughs> it's not English class. <laughs> oh, my child. She loves to read. If you don't know where Sierra is, she'll put, be in a corner reading. If you don't know where Sierra is, she will. Okay, so now we've made our connector piece. See that? It's like a little connector. And now I'm adding the tool on top of this. So... My first layer is this purple. Purple, purple, purple. I don't think I got two. Yeah, I got two of them. So this here is going to get connected here. And then I put the other layer of purple. And then I put the black underneath it to kind of like help make everything look darker. Like this now usually during this process I may just put things on top of each other and like three or four layers at a time but I think this time I'm just gonna do this now this is already four layers by the way this is already four layers This is already four layers. It's, it's two and two. Lots and lots of layers of tool. Just gotta keep getting it out the way. As we move along, just keep moving it out the way. It just keeps on. Tangled into everything. Don't worry about all that's going on over there. What you have to worry about is what's underneath the press foot. That's what I care about. Making sure there's no extra layers that I don't want in there. Just keep moving. Keep it moving. The sun is coming in from the side. Right now, it looks like it is. Woo! It, it was early when I started filming. It's usually the quietest time before everything starts really getting um, rowdy. Kids start coming in about 8.30 for camp and classes. So this is usually the best time for me to get things cranked out. Like literally. Literally cranked out. I really didn't notice how busy our street was. We had a pretty busy street. All right, so that's that's to there. Didn't quite make it all the way to this other side of the connector, but that's okay because I have this other piece. 
So with this piece, I'm going to just line it up this direction. Really make sure it's nice and full. I lift up my presser foot, put this underneath, and I'm going to reverse in a second to go back that way. Does that make sense? We got tool, tool, tool. <laughs> Tools everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna go this direction now and get my tool and go that's the other way. So this is six layers of tool right now. Six. And we haven't even added the two layers of black yet. This tool is gathered. Not like super, super gathered, but it's moderately gathered. My poor son, he got tired of waiting for me. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll have me for the rest of the day. He's good. All I'm doing is making sure everything's lined up and keep it moving. Just keep it pushing it out the way and line it all up. I'm going to show you how I can gather my piece here in a second. This is a lot of layers. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me how beautiful this dress ends up being when I'm done. It never does cease to amaze me. It's gorgeous. I love it. All right, so. Bam. Isn't it crazy? All right, so for filming purpose, I'm going to go ahead and put it together and then add the black layer here in just a minute, just because I can want to see how it kind of comes together really fast. Okay, so now this is pretty side facing up. I keep wrapping that. This is pretty side as well. Gonna open everything up. And I'm going to put pretty side onto pretty side. So take, I'm going to leave it out like this. Get my straps out the way. Make sure they're hanging down and take it and put pretty sides together. So I'm going to put this on top like this and I'm going to pin my where my straps are because the straps are a little weighted and they kind of like pull a little bit. Okay. Make sure I pin it a couple different spots. I'm going to pin at my side seams. Right here at my side seams. Some alarm is going off. <laughs> Don't really know where. One of my kiddos coming in here in a minute, so I'm going to probably pause it for a second and come right back to get my kiddo in.
you know, a lot of these different places. Good morning. <laughs> Bye, you too. Go on to the back, Annabelle, but Dwight Jr.'s back there. Okay, so got all my stuff all pinned up. Now, this is where I really, 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 really pin a lot because I don't want to have things shifting and moving on me. Okay, here we go. All right. So now I'm going to start stitching. So the only thing about my automatic cutter is that sometimes it goes so fast because I'm running fast that it unthreads. So sometimes I have to do that. Okay. Get this bad boy together. Start at the top. My seam allowance for this entire dress is half an inch. I'm pulling my strap out the way as I go. Okay, sometimes it likes to get sneak up underneath and get grabbed. Then move that strap out the way again. You have to see a little sinker. I've had some people ask me for the pattern for this dress. You know? <laughs> it has, I made it, I think, three years ago, I think it was. I think it was three years ago when I originally made this pattern um, for this dress. And it's, I literally just drafted it and kept it. I don't have a PDF version of it. I don't, I can probably get like some type of a copy company or something like that, maybe to turn it into a PDF. I'm not really sure. Um, so I don't know how that works. I haven't really done pattern making like that. I've done pattern making for drafting things like I did with this. Or, I can keep things going. Um, or I kind of keep things just moving because that's what I make. But, but I didn't draft it in a way that I can sell it, if that makes sense. Do I run over my pins? Yes, I do. Why? Because I can see the ones that are going to hit and the ones that aren't. I'm kind of proficient with it like that. Okay, so now we're finishing up. I'm gonna take this guy and put it inside. Stuff it inside. Oh, forgot a pin. Good. Here we go. There is our dress. But with everything cut, it really takes me like about 40 minutes, I guess, 40 minutes to an hour. If I have everything cut and pre-done, um, it doesn't take too long. But the, I'll have to go back in and Slip into my curves and cut the corners and things like that. But you get the gist of the how I make it. I mean, it's nothing too crazy. And there you go. All right. Bye. There you go. If you guys want to purchase a dress for a loved one or anything like that, or if you want to get one specially made for you, I have made these in adult versions, but I do have to draft it from 
original patterns to take your measurements and then make it. So for, for little girls, it's not as much curves to have to deal with. Um, but with women, I do. I have to turn this into a princess theme and um, lots of other things. So if you want to, um, I'll put the link to my Etsy shop down below and then you can order it on my Etsy shop. Yay! Um, or you can just message me and I can send you a PayPal invoice. Either way, very pretty. I'm going to add the black underneath it here shortly. It's so poofy. Look how poofy it is. And it's not even, it's like not even all the poofiness, but it has. Amazing. I'm going to burn all my edges. Do my top stitching, the wall metal, final things. But here is the dress. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. Bye.